Congresswoman, my, my first question is about the Armenian Genocide Resolution. Now that we have 226 co-sponsors, uh, what's next? Well, what needs to be next is uh, a few things, very important things. We want to, number one, keep getting co-sponsors. So this is not something that has ended. This is still, we are still in play and uh, every week I talk to members on the floor of the House to invite them to come on to the resolution, answer questions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, very importantly, uh, Mr. Lantos, Congressman Tom Lantos uh, from California, Northern California, uh, is chairman of the International Relations Committee. He needs to schedule the bill uh, for markup. That means that you pass the write up the bill, it's accepted by the committee, there's a vote of that committee, and then once they pass that through that committee, then it qualifies to come to the floor of the House uh, for action. And of course, that third uh, uh, piece is what we are preparing for with all of the co-sponsors. Now why is 226 and counting uh, important? Because the majority of the House is 218. So we not only have to keep members on the legislation, that's also very important, not allow people to stray, not allow the uh, Turkish lobby uh, to, uh, to affect members and peel them off of the legislation. Uh, but those are, those are the three things. More co-sponsors, keep the co-sponsors that we have, A. B, Mr. Lantos must take it up in his committee and we need to pass it out of that committee, have the votes there, and then, uh, then it needs to move to the floor, scheduled for the floor of the House, and win on the floor of the House. Now, obviously there's, a, I mean, uh, there are, the expectations are high, and uh, Speaker Pelosi, I mean, it's, it's up to her, uh, and, and it's under, understandable, she's, she's under a lot of pressure from uh, lobby groups and the Turkish government and the State Department. So how do you see this thing uh, developing in the next few weeks? Well, the Armenian uh, uh, American community uh, should uh, retain their confidence in uh, Speaker Pelosi. She has always been on the resolution since she came to the Congress. She was committed to the community and uh, what needs to be done uh, she has spoken every year on it, on the floor of the House, uh, and now uh, we are so proud that she is our speaker. So she hasn't changed her mind about the issue. Uh, it's up to us to be able to pass it so that it, uh, we have the co-sponsors, that we get it through the committee, the votes on the committee. Uh, the speaker doesn't tell people how, how to vote. Some people think that the speaker does, but it really doesn't work that way. This is a democratic institution, small d. Uh, and then uh, she likes to win, so we're gonna have to demonstrate that we have the votes on the floor in order to win. And we have all known from the very beginning, from the very beginning, no one knows it better than the Armenian uh, American community, that this has always been tough. Uh, the opposition understands our position of strength now, and uh, they keep ratcheting up every day. Uh, you mentioned the opposition. Uh, do you see, do you feel any difference between the way the opposition operated previously and this year in terms of both the Turkish government uh, and also the lobby groups? Yeah, they've increased it. They've increased it. There's more money and there's more pressure and that's not a surprise to me. And uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the letter signed by eight uh, former uh, uh, secretaries of state? I'm not surprised. I have to tell you I'm not surprised. And the reason I'm not surprised is each one of those secretaries of st state, all former, are defending the policy that they carried, that they implemented. We haven't had one administration that was with us. This is how high the climb is. And so while I would like to have had it be different, uh, it's not a surprise to me because every single administration has sided uh, the other way. They have not been with us. That's why we know uh, that uh, it's up to us uh, to launch this and to move it. And I think uh, they're sending this letter, uh, uh, shows the, uh, you know, the amount of the lobby. I mean, there's a lot of money in this.
There's a ton of money in this, in plain English. So, uh, yeah, we, we've always known we've had a tough fight. They've been successful for 25 years in the Congress. But I believe that we can change it, and I believe that we will change it. And the reason for that is, is because it's the right thing to do. Um, Congresswoman, why is it important for uh, the United States Congress to recognize a crime against humanity that took place 92 years ago in a different part of the world? The greatest strength that America has is her moral standing in the world. That has been and continues to be the most eloquent statement about who and what we are as a nation. And while we have moved away from some of those values, uh, very sadly, I might say, and that has chipped away at the credibility of the United States of America, uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, yes, we are the mightiest in terms of military. Uh, we certainly are the most powerful economic uh, uh, power uh, in the world. Uh, but without moral standing, then you have a house that essentially is built on sand. And so this is about who and what we stand for, who we are and what we stand for. And uh, our human rights record and our recognition uh, to correct not only history around the world, but our very own history. We had to fight to acknowledge that slavery was wrong in our country. So we, we have a very, very long record on this. And that's why it is important. That's why it is important. What did Hitler say? What did Hitler say? That's right. Who will remember the Armenians? Uh, we will. Congressman, this is, uh, uh, this is a very important human rights issue, but it's also a, a very personal issue for you. Can you talk about that? Well, as, as you know, uh, I am uh, half high and half Asuri. And so that's a very powerful mixture for me because in both backgrounds, both backgrounds on both sides of my family uh, were persecuted and fled, uh, fled the region. On, my, uh, on the Armenian side of my family, uh, no one can ever suggest. I mean, when I saw that full page ad in the New York Times taken out by the Turkish lobby saying, let's settle this once and for all as to whether there was or was not a genocide and have a commission, excuse me, did my grandmother lie? I mean, I, I sat at her knee and she described the slaughter of her own family. So uh, that, it's not something that's distant from me. And, uh, uh, and so it, it's not only about their personal journey and uh, uh, the million uh, uh, plus that, uh, that, that died. This is, we're not asking anyone for money. We're, at, we're simply stating that this be a fact that is set down and recognized by the American people. And I think the American people are way ahead of us. There isn't any argument in my congressional district or across the country as to whether this is something that took place. In fact, constituents are stunned that this is even a battle. Um, and the battle is being waged uh, uh, denial. It's denial. I think that it would be a gift for the, uh, for the Turkish uh, people and the Turkish government to get this behind them. This isn't the present day uh, Turkey that did it. This is the Ottoman Empire. So uh, yes, this is very, very close to me. It's, it's my family. It's who I am. It's, it's who I come from. And so why wouldn't I? But these things do not stop because they are simply personal. This is, uh, I think, uh, so important for our nation to recognize. And you know, when, when you move from denial to truth, you're free. Thank you very much. Thank you.